Welcome everyone. Today we'll be covering how to create a minimal web API with .NET 7 and the existing built-in container support. The tools necessary are Visual Studio Community, Visual Studio Code, Docker, Postman and Microsoft Management Studio. We are going to show you how to create a minimal web API, how to leverage the built-in container support, how to use type response instead of response, going to use map group API and individual API, how to access database from the API and test with Postman. The necessary documentation is the following. It covers the built-in support for .NET, how to create a, a new web API, and consider covering the security, certificates, and how to host in Docker if you're going to deploy the API for production. This is the documentation necessary for the built-in container support. You can also uh, test everything with the learning models. You can then follow the documentation starting from Map Group API. And you should consider to review this section. But if you are going into production, you need to cover this one. In our case, the only requirements that you need is an existing database and access to that database. You can check it in our previous video if you don't have one. So now let's get started with how to create a minimal web API. You can create a new repository if you need one and create a new asp.net core empty project. You don't need a repository, it's optional, but we always save our templates and the tests. You need to set a directory, the name, and then check Docker and top level statements. You don't need those for this tutorial. I advise you to build from time to time, just to check for errors. Then you open the package manager console and have the built-in support for containers. Uh, if the, there is an error, you just add it manually, open the nugget and uh, install the and install the package manually. Do the same for Microsoft Entity Framework Core. Microsoft uh, the SKL server. Diagnostics, it will give you some exceptions and errors that may occur in the database. In production, the documentation is not advising to install this, so it's your call. Let's now cover how to leverage the built-in container support and how to make the first check with Postman. You just need to execute this one, just make sure that Docker is running. You can then check if the image was created properly. You can then run the container with the following command. But notice that it's caps lock sensitive and when you created the image, it uh, removed the caps lock. Now we can check uh, the simple test and hello, hello world with uh, the Postman desktop. If you stop the container, obviously there will not be any response. We will now modify the minimal web API using type responses for .NET 6 or .NET 7. We are going to use map group API, be accessing an existing database from the API and test everything with Postman. So let's first modify the code to access the local database. So we need to add a new class called ASP.NET Users and add the matching properties of ASP.NET users. You can check the previous video if you are unsure what entity we are creating here. You can then create the context. We call them ASP.NET database, but you can call it whatever you want. Uh, you just need to inherit from database context. You can then create a new class, ASP.NET user DTO or data transfer object. This is to hide specific properties because we don't want to show all of the ASP.NET users' properties. Now we can change the program.cs using type response from .NET 6 and above. The routing is also different from the typical uh, web API using the controllers. So we're going to comment out the existing code and follow the tutorial section with type response and uh, data transfer object. Yeah, this is the documentation if you want to follow. Uh, we just added a new connection string and a service that connects to a local database instead of the in-memory database change. 
then we purpose the code and adapt it to our example uh, because we wanted to access something local. So the to do is the ASP.NET user and the to do database is the ASP.NET database. We remove the delete and modify and post to capture the related exceptions. Uh, in this case, you can add an optional package, the one that we mentioned before. This is called the diagnostics to capture exceptions and errors on the database. So you shouldn't install this if it is to production. But for testing is actually quite useful because it gives uh, additional feedback. Now, you can open the app settings JSON in order to edit the connection stream. Once you complete your modifications, build a solution. This is important. Every time you create an image, you should always build in order to check for errors and to make sure that the image is containing everything that you need. Run this command to publish the new image and then we can run the container using this command. This is done. You can check in Microsoft SKL just using something that we already covered in another video. So now we can check in Postman. We test first the hello world. It's still working. We left it uh, in the tests. You can then get all data. And if you use the DTO, the data transfer object, it will only bring three properties. That's it for today. We only wanted to cover the basics of minimal web API using .NET 7. We'll see you in another video.